Hello, these will be the answers to the questions on the Newton's Laws worksheet. So we answered the first question already. I'm going to go on with the second one. If a bullet is fired from a gun towards a target, explain why the gun recoils as the bullet is fired. Well, this relates to Newton's third law. In all explained questions in physics, you will need to refer to a law or um, um, concept that is related in the context of the question. So this is where you should mention Newton's third law. Explain that this is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And the force on the bullet relate um, the force on the bullet also acts on the gun. So the system of the action and the reaction is the gun, let this be the gun and let this be the bullet. So the force on the bullet also acts on the gun. So there, there is an action reaction force pair right there. If the target is close to the gun and the bullet hits the target at almost the same speed as it left the gun, but if, if the bullet travels a long distance to the target, it arrives at much lower speed. So why this happens? Uh, that happens because when the target is close, the bullet will not have time to fall at uh, as part of its projectile motion. So we're asking to find here um, if the bullet travels a long distance to the target it arrives at much lower speed. Well obviously this will be moving through air so it will also lose some energy to air friction. So because of air friction it will travel a longer distance uh, if the target is further. So air friction will cause it to lose energy which means lower speed. In electronic devices, the moving electrons that make up the electric currents may have to change their motions millions of times each second. So I'm underlining this because we are meant to find what is the, um, at the core of the question. What is the question that we're answering? This is the context. Every question has a story. So how are electrons able to do this? Well, you know electrons have very, very little mass. So Newton's second law states that F equals M times A. Force on the electron would be the force due to the electric field, the electric force. And you can see that mass and acceleration are inversely proportional. So if mass is small, that means acceleration will be big. And electrons have very small mass, so their accelerations are, are very large, which answers this bit. The keyword is change. Change is what we name acceleration. So if velocity is changing quickly, that means there's high acceleration. Now, describe the necessary conditions for an object to be in equilibrium. To be in equilibrium means this is Newton's first law. We mentioned that this is the law of inertia. Sorry. So the law of inertia, which means tendency to maintain motion, whether it is at rest or it moving. Inertia is the property of matter which causes it to maintain its motion. It's why you jump forward when the car stops quickly. Uh, so to be in equilibrium means if F net equals zero. This is when a mass is in equilibrium. So back to the tug of war example, if one team pulls one side and the other pulls on to the other side with equal forces, that is a case of equilibrium. If these are two applied forces on a mass and the mass has a, has a weight of three newtons sitting on the floor, which shows a reaction force of three newtons. There are four forces, but this mass is in equilibrium. Describe what happens when an object is 
not in equilibrium, that is the statement of Newton's second law, where F equals mass times acceleration. So we can simply say it accelerates, basically saying that its motion will change, its velocity will change. So here's a calculation question. An athlete of 71.4 kilograms accelerates from rest to a speed of such in a time of 1.98 seconds, calculate its acceleration. We can use our good old V equals U plus AT formula. We are going from rest, zero initial speed, to a speed of 9.84 in a time of 1.98 seconds. So acceleration is going to be 9.84 divided by 1.98, whatever that is in meters per second squared. You can do this in your calculator. In part B, we have a similar example, a bullet of this mass, initial velocity zero, and this is the final velocity. So to find the acceleration, let's do the same thing. Um, we're going to do basically the same thing, so I'll jump to the calculation. I'm going to divide the final velocity, which it reaches, which is this, divided by the time, 1.53, 10 to the power of minus 3. Now, just a tip about calculating these, num these values. I see a lot of students who put 1.22 times 10 to the power of 3, divided by da -da 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 -da, 10 to the power minus 3. Now, what I do is I like simplifying and reduce the chance of making mistake. So I would like to calculate this first, which gives me 0 0.797. And then I deal with the powers of 10, which would give me 10 to the power of 6. Well, this is my answer. So all I do with my calculator is this, and this, I obviously see minus 3 at the bottom will go up as plus 3, so that's a plus 6. Since this is acceleration, it's going to be meters per second squared. Now when we want to find the force, this is where we use F equals mass times acceleration, but standard units like to go with standard units. So the mass is given in grams, and please remember that for mass, uh, the standard international unit is kilograms. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to even bother writing this as a decimal. I'm simply going to do that, which is going to be the mass in kilograms. Because for changing from grams to kilograms, I divide by a thousand. So I write this in scientific notation. That's the mass. And then multiply that by this acceleration we found over here. So put that there. When you multiply, you will get the answer for the force, and it will be in Newtons, okay? Now, this brings us to the multiple choice. If a moving object is subject to a constant force, which of the following can be deduced from Newton's first law? Okay, the key terms. Newton's first law, that's the law of inertia, and there's a constant force acting. So the question is telling us that there is a constant force acting. There is not a zero net force. So acceleration cannot be zero either. So that means velocity is changing. So let's choose which one. We know it's not going to be constant velocity. We know well, we don't know any of these to be as a fact, but we do know that velocity is changing. That could be due to changing direction. It could be moving in the same direction with increasing speed or decreasing speed. Or it could be only direction changing with the constant speed, like in a circular motion. But in general, when we say A, that covers what is in C and D. So we will go with a. Okay, question number seven. A skydiver of mass 80 kilograms falls vertically with a constant speed of 50. So here's our skydiver, here's our free body diagram. Well, 
it has 80 kilograms mass and we want the force so we also know that the key term that's given in the question is that it's constant speed constant speed always means zero sorry constant velocity always means acceleration is zero but this is not changing direction so I can deduce that constant speed will be zero acceleration that means net force is zero and that means if there's weight there has to be an equal and opposite force which is the upward force which will be air friction to find the value of the air friction I know it's going to be equal and opposite to the weight so I need to find the weight because if F net is zero magnitude of the force of air must be equal to the magnitude of the weight by magnitude I mean the number the value so what is weight weight is a force and force is mass times acceleration weight is gravitational force so it is mass times the gravitational acceleration weight equals mg this is nothing but an application of f equals m a where the kind of force is weight mass is mass and acceleration is gravitational acceleration so one, once you know the mass of an object multiplied by g which is 9.81 but this is a multiple choice question so we estimate that to be 10 so 80 times 10 this has to be 800 newtons downward which means the force of air must also be 800 newtons to balance that question number eight um, don't worry about this word translational equilibrium is the equilibrium I explained to you alternatively there's rotational equilibrium but we will not discuss that so um, don't worry about the word uh, it's the equilibrium that we talked about and it means F net equals zero which also means acceleration equals zero and that means velocity is constant so what which one can be the condition the resultant force on the body in any direction is zero the velocity of the body in any direction of zero well no velocity may be non-zero just not changing so velocity not changing but it doesn't have to be zero for example a VT graph that's an equilibrium situation that's also an equilibrium situation it's at rest its motion is not changing at rest here its motion is not changing at a constant velocity both of these are equilibrium cases no external force acting on the body that's also wrong because there could be 50 forces acting but the catch is that they add up to a zero net force like the equal tug of war case so not necessarily uh, don't worry about this one just yet because we didn't learn this concept uh, but that is not always the case so the resultant force on the body in any direction is zero is what we already know so moving on I asked you to skip number 9 because I will explain it later so I'll move on to 11 you might have realized there's no number 10 because I actually removed it before so this is an interesting question we know the mass we know the acceleration given in the picture and there's a resistive force of 500 and there's a force that's pulling it forward now the question is asking for the net force from Newton's second law, what do we know about net force? We know this is mass times acceleration. So it's simpler than you think if you chose any of these different answers other than the 300. Answer is 300 and here is why. The question is asking for resultant force. No matter how many forces acting on it, shown or not shown on the diagram, we don't care. We want the res resultant force. So I need the outcome acceleration and the mass. So all I need is the mass and the acceleration. So ladies and gentlemen, my answer is 300. That's the answer. Now, if you find this confusing um, 
and this is bugging you, let me tell you what is really happening. The resultant force causing the 0.3 meters per second is what remains when these forces are cancelled. So there's friction of 500 eating up 500 of this applied force. So this, five, this applied force must be not even just equal to the 500, but 300 more than the 500. So this full story is, the, this force must be 800 newtons. If I gave you these numbers and ask you how to calculate the uh, acceleration, here is what you would do. You have 800 pulling to one side, 500 pulling to the other side. You would tell me, oh, resultant force is 800 minus 500, which is 300. That is F net. And then you would say force, net force, equals mass times the acceleration and you would calculate acceleration to be 0 0.3 well yeah that is what was given but we didn't need to do any of this it, the question is not asking I just did it to explain this uh, the story to to you and this is all this question really wants because it does say net force so all you need is mass times the acceleration I'll skip number 12 again to be explained later and that brings us to number 13. So one force that is acting on a student sitting on a chair is the pull of gravity. So we are looking at uh, to find the force pair according to Newton's third law. Now we are trying to find the reaction force to the pull of gravity on the student. Now, action-reaction pairs are mutual, equal and opposite. So let's say this is the student and this is Earth. So the force of gravity on the student is that. This is the action. This is from Earth on the student. The force pair to that force will be the student's force on Earth. So that's why answer is D. This may sound unreasonable, like you're not pulling Earth, you might think, but hey, you are. You're just not pulling it with enough force to cause enough acceleration on the huge mass of Earth your mass is tiny compared to Earth, so you fall. Well, actually, these two masses are attracting each other. You are a mass, Earth is a mass, and it's an attractive force between you and Earth. But you are accelerating because your mass is tiny compared to the Earth. But that doesn't mean you're not attracting Earth. Action, reaction, equal and opposite. This is actually your weight.